All right, we've looked at a couple of different signed sign tests, and this Wilcoxon signed rank test, what this is for um, is to see if there's actually a difference in this case, two methods. And typically what you're looking at is we assume that both of these have pretty much the same symmetric distribution. Okay, you don't have to be normal, but if they're, if they're skewed differences, then we would do something else. So what I'm looking at is I have the time, okay, that each worker, so we have all the 11 workers here, and they completed a task using one method A and then another method B, all right? So based on these completion times, we want to see if there is actual an actual difference. So, of course, it would make sense if when we look at the differences, if you get a positive, then method A required more time. A negative would be method B. So that's the first thing I want to do is find my differences. So I subtract those two, copy that straight down, and just as we've done in past sign test, remember when there's no difference, this one you just dump. We're not even going to use that one. Okay, so I know that to begin with, I had 11 workers. I'm going to call this my new in because I dumped one. It's going to be 10 because I'm going to need that for my formulas over here. All right, so then the next thing you do is you absolute reference, absolute reference, absolute value each one of these because that's how we're going to rank them by their absolute difference. And so I copy that straight down. Don't really care about the zero one. That's fine. And now I want to rank these. So I don't know. My eyes get buggy to just try to do this. And I don't care about the zero once again to try to do this on my own. So what I do is I go over here and I copy. And watch this. When I paste it, what happened? Well, it took that formula. So what I want to do is I just want to copy and paste the values. And then let's just move that so there's no space. So I just find this easier to sort this and then I start my ranking. So one, two, remember when you have repeats, that's the average of three and four. So 3.5, 3.5, so that's three and four. So next would be five. So the average of five and six, 5.5, 5 .5, 5 5.5, so that's five and six. This would be 7, 8, 9, and 10. And now I have my rankings. So now I have to come over here and put these values. 2.4, 3.5, oops, oops, 3.5. I guess I can just look at these. 7 is 8, 5 is 5.5. Where's the other one? 5.5, my 9. 10, my 0.67, and my 0.8, uh oh, my 0.89. So all I did was just transfer this because I want them to be on the same levels. And the reason why now is now I'm going to look at my negative, how many negative ranks I have, and how many positive ranks I have. So basically what I want to do is I want to look at the difference, okay, so my original difference is here, and if it's negative, then I will make my rank negative. Now, I'm just kind of lazy, and I love if statements, so what I do is I look at this and I say if my differences is negative, then what I want to do is take the negative of my rank value. Otherwise, I don't do anything. So I put an open quote, a space, which just says don't do anything, and then close. Nothing happened because that one's not negative. So if this works, that should be negative 2. So let's copy this straight down. Hey, it worked. So I only, have, only had two negative ranks. So I'm going to do the same thing here. So if my difference is positive, then I just simply take my rank 
otherwise again I don't do anything just a just a little trick I mean I will admit that my background is computer science so I'm kind of used to if statements things like that but the, these are pretty cool especially if you're lazy like me right now this becomes this column here mm -hmm, becomes our test statistic when we sum it and we call this this T positive so all we do is sum our positive values and that gives me my so this is my sampling distribution for this T positive so now from here I want to be able um, to do to find a Z value of course and how do you find Z values well you take your value of interest of your from your sample minus the mean. Look, 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 look at right there. There's a formula for mean. So the mean, and then divide by the standard deviation. So looking at this formula, be careful with parentheses. I'm going to open parentheses for the top. My n times open parentheses n plus one. Close, close the top, and divide by four, which is just in the formula. That's where where the four comes from. And then my square root, open a square root, open the numerator, n times open, n plus 1, close that one, times 2 times n plus 1, close that one, close my numerator, divide by 24, and close my um, square root and I get my value. All right, so now from here, I'm pretty much home free because I can get my Z value. Now, remember that when we're doing these rank tests, we're basing this on, if you go back to our first example of either positive or negative binomial, and in this case, our continuity correction, okay, because this is going to be greater than is because if one's greater than the other, right, method A, then there's a difference. So in this case, our test statistic is going to be that value minus 0 0.5. Okay, once again, that was from stats one, the continuity correction factor based on this being a, and in fact, I can just put that here so you see it, a greater than for my Z or equal to. So how do you find your Z? You take your test statistic minus your mean and divide by your standard deviation. Okay, and so that gives me the, you can definitely see that's to the right. Um, I'll do this in steps because, because this is, we're looking at a greater than, right? If one method the median time is greater than another for all our alternative. So you know you're going to have to do one minus to get our p-value. So I'm going to do this in steps. So the first step, if you go look this up in a table or you use this, that's giving you from all the way from minus infinity up to that value. Well, my alternative is that we think one method A is greater than method B. So I'll do the one minus, and then finally, this is because this is using our normal approximation, I am actually doing this with a two-tail test. Okay, that part might be kind of confusing because you're like, yeah, but you said that the alternative, okay, so the alternative is greater than, well, in this case, if I'm doing the normal approximation, I have to use my two-tail test to get finally my p-value and I don't know in this case if we're looking at um, maybe our alpha being 0 0.05 this p-value is less than so we would reject the null so remember the null is saying that there is no difference okay in these two methods or that method A is less than method B our alternative is saying that no, we think method A, the median time is greater than. So we would conclude that the median completion time, okay, for these two methods are definitely not equal. And so in this case, 
if this being median times, then we would actually conclude that method B is the faster of the two methods.